Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young, here to talk some more K-State football, recapping what we heard from Joe Klanderman yesterday, the defensive coordinator for the Wildcats, who uh, is apparently going to be in charge of a very, very strong bunch this year. But before we go any further, we should jump right into it and let you know that the Wildcats are headed to Dublin, Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at cats2ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. As we get ourselves closer to the Aer Lingus College Football Classic, both the version of this year, which is 10 days away, and next year's, which uh, if, I, if I do some math, would be a year and nine days away from when you're all seeing this so uh it's going to be here before you know it will be an exciting time k-state iowa state Aer Lingus college football classic but let's not delay the main reason that we are together today and that's to talk about joe klanderman and hear a little bit from what the head coach of the wildcats said and dy before i even ask you a question i'm just going to play about a minute and a half here of joe klanderman because this is him it starts out he's talking about the safeties here but I think it really illustrates the overall theme of the K-State defense right now. This is how he ended his press conference yesterday, talking about the depth at safety. Colbin McAllister's been sensational. Colbin McAllister's playing uh, at a level close to them. Um, he'll, he'll, he's played a couple of spots back there for us. He's backed up uh, Jordan, and he's backed up VJ. And so uh, I feel we have a little bit of position flexibility with him. Jack Fabris has been really good. He had a really good spring. He's had he's continued that this fall. Uh, he's uh, backing up Jordan right now, and uh, I feel he can run the show back there just as as well as Jordan can. Uh, at free safety, Kendra Steiger is a, a guy that's um, been um, rock solid. He's just a tough, tough kid that um, will mix it up with you. Has some man ability, um, and he can come in there and give us. Uh, some some snaps for Marquise, um, but it goes deeper than that. Uh, you know, Daniel Cobbs has also been a free safety behind Marquise, just tremendously athletic, uh, and and ha again gives us some uh, ability to play out in space. Um, and then uh, Wesley Fair has been a, a great uh, player. We've got him playing strong safety right now behind VJ, um, but man, I, Wes I really feel like we could get some snaps out of Wesley this year too. You know, and, and to be honest with you, some of the guys that I haven't mentioned are probably at levels where maybe some of our twos have been in years prior. You know, when, when you talk about, you know, Mikey Bergeron, Jet Deneen, Trey Krause, some of those guys could probably play for us too. It's just the competition in that room is really, really stiff. So there you go. That That's a lot there, but I think it really illustrates perfectly where K-State's defense is at right now, where there are names galore for – only 11 spots on the field at one time. Yeah, and that's obviously all the safeties there. And I think the the biggest illustration of where they are from a depth standpoint is basically guys on the third and fourth line right now that probably won't play because they're on the third and fourth line would have been comfortably in the rotation in prior seasons. That is the difference. The third and fourth safeties this year, third and fourth string safeties this year, would have been second string at worst in prior seasons. Uh, that is how much that they have upgraded. And that doesn't even include the trio of starters that could be the best in the Big 12, obviously, uh, at safety. And you know how I feel about Jordan Riley. And that was, he's been my one of my favorites. Your guy. Off Jordan season. Riley. He is my guy. Uh, he definitely. No one can watch his press conference. Go to our YouTube channel, watch Jordan Riley talk. Nobody can watch that one and not be like, I like this dude. Like that was that was a great press conference. Just the level of charisma, uh, engagement, and just the level of conversation that you have with that kind of guy is pretty pretty remarkable. So there you're not gonna find me say a bad thing about the safeties. Probably until game start, right? <laughs> uh, but there's a lot to like about this room. And and something else that I would probably 
say is that uh, I, I know we haven't talked about this a whole lot, but like Joe Clamor just showed up to a press conference looking like he's about to coach a game, right? Yeah. Like he's got visor on already. He's got he's got it all on right there. He's got I think I, I saw a pencil behind the ear too. Like he came yeah, prepared. Yeah. He uh he he really leans into the I'm gonna dress like dre- he dresses for the job he wants and also the job that he has the way that he uh, sets things up. One other thing on the the depth here, uh, this was just a real quick one from Joe Klanderman, but again, I think it's just so interesting to hear how all of this hype about this guy's looking great, this guy's looking great that we've heard from you know players or position coaches that you know, you might have a vested interest in and you might have an inflated thought of, Hey, yeah, of course my guys look like studs out there. It's Chris Kleiman has iterated it. It's Connor Riley has iterated it. Joe Klanderman has done it now. And uh, this was him yesterday on the depth. I would say so. And that's hard to say because I haven't seen some of those guys that we're counting on in games yet, but ability wise, there's no question about it. And that was him responding to, this is the deepest team that he, he thinks he's ever had at K-State. And, and and look, he's overseen a defense that helped win a Big 12 championship. Like, there's so much that goes into to that short response, but I think it's significant and important to, to hear, like, Joe Klanderman is not an unrealistic guy. That, that is a guy that bases himself in reality. And so if he's saying this and he's seen a lot of football, especially now at the Big 12 level, uh, he definitely means it, and it definitely has – uh, some some really strong meaning behind it. The difference between this group and that 2022 group that won a Big 12 title is I think we went into this season absolutely knowing that they had All-American caliber players and Felix Anudike Uzama and Julius Brents that were going to be high NFL draft picks. I'm not sure they got that. If they do, it's in the younger classes that probably aren't draft eligible. But Marquis Siegel is going to play on Sundays, and he is really good. Maybe Keenan Garber and Jacob Parrish play on Sundays, and they are very good. And, and I maybe they're inching closer, but I don't think they quite have Eli Huggins yet at, at D tackle. Yeah, that that is the one spot where they seem to be kind of still unless, waiting. But we did Eli hear, yeah, yeah, Damian Eli Leo. We we got that yesterday uh, or t- two days ago from. The position coaches and Joe Klanderman also mentioned it today and gave a little bit more insight to the defensive tackle position. What what do you make of how he handled the questions about that group? Because I really do think, and I said it yesterday, I, this seems to be the spot that K-State fans are probably the most unsure of when it comes to the defense because it's just a lot of unknown. And I, I think there's still a lot of hangover from having Eli Huggins just lock that spot down. And before Eli Huggins, like, you had Timmy Horn transfer in and do what he did to get a shot in the NFL now that's been pretty consistent. Like That's been a spot that hasn't been something K-State fans have had to worry about so much, and now it seems like they've kind of been trying to find it. So uh, what did you make of Joe Klanderman's thoughts on the defensive tackles? He made it sound like a little bit more of a position battle between Damian and Uso, and that's fine. That's probably a good thing, breed that competition a little bit iron sharpens iron and so forth and what have you. I I have no problem with that. What I will say is I'll be curious of what the ceiling is because what I'm not concerned about is I I do think there's a certain level of floor with this group that isn't like they're not going to be terrible is what I'm trying to say, I guess, because I think Ash was coming on. I think Damian Neal Leo's improved by leaps and bounds. And I think you so even if he doesn't get to his ceiling, he can be okay to solid at worst. I don't think it's going to be a position group that implodes, but the difference between okay to good and good to great might be the difference in what six and three in the Big Twelve to nine and zero. Oh. Yeah, no, the, the difference. I mean, it's going to be crucial to to kind of figure that out and and see how it ends up going uh another guy in a really a a group that has i think a lot of questions and discussion going around it is the linebackers austin romaine is a name that we've heard a lot throughout fall camp 
But this is what Joe Klanderman had to specifically say about one of his young linebackers. Austin remains an upper echelon player. I mean, he's a really good football player. He's an athletic kid that we, we knew that. We knew his physical. He's got mental toughness. Last year, I think he just got caught up in how long a season is. When you're a true freshman, he started off hot. You know, we liked him. Thought he'd be good in a reserve role. Daniel Green got hurt. All of a sudden, he's playing a lot more. And he did well initially. And I think by week eight, nine, ten, when his body and his mind are starting to wear down, that's a lot different intensity than high school football. And uh, I think it caught up to him a little bit. But then he retooled himself, and this spring he was awesome. And we were kind of waiting to see if there would be an encore performance of that this fall, and there has been. He's been sensational. All right, what what do you think of uh, the love that Austin Romain has been getting? And, and maybe more than anything, how impactful is that to K-State's chances of being that team that has a defense that propels you closer to 9-0 and than 6-3 and in the Big 12? Joe Clarem, a little bit of a wordsmith there too, right? An encore performance, just like the stuff that he spits out. Man. Yeah, I just really like, like he's music, one of my I favorite guess. interviews of, of the coaches. He's always one of my favorite interviews, um, and and he's so engaging that helps. Austin Romain being good was pretty important to start the year. Now it's like absolutely critical because you don't know what's going to happen with Alec Marenko. So I think this is huge. I don't know about you. It's one of the biggest developments of training camp so far. And I could probably point to five, and it would be in the top five. And another one in the top five would probably be that Terry Kirksey's coming on too. Yeah, Terry Kirksey's another one that should not be left out. I, I didn't grab the audio on Kirksey, but I did have a note down to, to bring him up because that's a guy that – Former Hutch Community College guy oh, came in, seemed to take some. Well, you know, got to give a, talk about, give a shout out to the Salt City DY. You can't talk about a Hutch player without saying that they're from Hutch. Right? Yeah, I mean, well, roll drags. Um, but like, that's a guy that it seemingly has all kind of fallen into place now, where it's clicking. And this is another one of those like, it feels like a luxury for K State, where yeah, you're making contingency plans and you have all these things ready to go, but. You may not be expecting it to, to work out. Uh, it's going to work out, it seems, for them at linebacker because, yes, Austin remains stepping up despite the fact that Alec Marenko has dealt with injuries and Terry Kirksey now is making some noise. Um, how real is that, and, and what are the chances that we see him making numerous plays for K-State this year? I'm more willing to buy into the remain thing than Kirksey just because I left last season thinking, Romain just did this as a true freshman. Like he's probably going to be a dude. He's not going to have true freshman mistakes for the next four years, right? Like that worm is going to turn. With Kirksey, I left last season thinking, I'll be honest, does, does this kid ever play, right? Because that had to be one of his years to shine, was it? Um, it would be a really good story if it comes true. I hope to heck for him that it does. I'll be rooting for him. I, it sounds like there's a pretty good chance that he's at least going to get the opportunity. He's going to hit the field and he's going to sink or swim because he's at least done enough in training camp to this point to be given the luxury of being thrown out on the field. What is it? August 31st and seeing if he can sink or swim. Yeah. Now does he swim instead of sink? I'm not ready to go there because it's easier to, you know, start to make surges for the first time in your career on August 13th. And that's a lot different than doing it on September. Was it 13th against Arizona? Yeah. Like, uh, that's we'll, we'll see if, if it translates a lot of the time it does. Sometimes it does. What else did you hear from Joe Klanderman yesterday that, uh, that caught your attention or you really, you really like to hear like did you go in there with anything like okay i need to hear this and he was able to confirm it for you or maybe you didn't hear something that you wanted and and maybe that's where you have questions lingering about this defense which again it seems like a lot of questions are being cleared up yeah i i mean i'm i'm exiting you know last week was kind of offense week and this week's kind of defense week and i don't know if they're just better at the propaganda but I didn't feel as good about the offense after Tuesday of last week as I do about the Kansas State defense after Tuesday of this week. <laughs> no, 
I say propaganda because well, we've seen probably a combined 90 minutes of practice. Uh, there's a lot more than 90 minutes of practice that we haven't seen, right? So what have we not seen? What will translate to the season? What won't? What is a little bit of bluster? What isn't? Those things matter. But my takeaway is going to be what I entered training camp and try to urge and caution people, and I know you and Drew were on that bandwagon as well, is that the defense is going to be better than the offense, at least for the first three to four, maybe five, six games. Mm -hmm. That Maybe that flips. Maybe that flips, but that's the way it's going to be. Does does that concern you at all to say, though? Like, No, because I think – Game win the game all those games because the, 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 they have to win those games if they want to be in the position to win the Big Twelve. Like those are going to be important ones. Like can they can they really be successful if that's the case? Is that how good this defense is going to be? I think that the defense can be that good. Uh, health will matter. So someone can can pull this up, you know, in a month. Be like he was out of his mind. When if I'm out of my mind, it's probably because there was a significant injury or two, right? That's that's that tends to be how this works. So health will matter, but health notwithstanding, I feel good about what I just said. And that's one, partially because I think the defense is that good. And two, I think the offense will struggle. And I think the offense will struggle probably we do a little bit against Tulane. John Summerall's a defense of mine. He's had some really good defenses at Troy. Um, going to give people nasty flashbacks to 2022 because I, I know a K-State team that struggled offensively against Tulane <laughs> there as well. Yeah, but it's a different different coach. Probably same kind of approach, though, John Summerall. Troy's, I you know, Cole Manbeck said this on a three-mall podcast, and so I didn't fact check it, and I might be misremembering to an extent, but I think Troy had a top 20 SP plus defense last year. Um, now they, they they missed, they lost some pieces. And obviously that guy's at Tulane. Now we're talking about Tulane who actually was not as good in the SP plus as Troy last year. Um, interestingly enough. So things to take into consideration here. Tulane can challenge a little bit. I think there's going to be some growing pains at time. I think those growing pains will be maybe week two against Tulane. I think week four against BYU, you could see some offensive growing pains. And I, people say, BYU, it's one of the four worst teams in the Big 12. Yeah, but it's also right after playing Arizona and right before playing Oklahoma State. And when you're dealing with the side of the ball that has as much youth as this offense will have and an experience, those trap games will probably be more um, – what do I want to say? Like uh, more influential. Like those trap games will be more powerful to the offense than it will the defense because they don't they don't have as many adults in the room, right? That's the way I see it. So that week four game because there's no bye week, right? So that week four game against BYU, and I want to say is it week seven or eight against West Virginia when the one that's positioned right between Colorado. Um, and Kansas, Mm -hmm. like I would worry about what your offense looks like in the games that kind of test your maturity. Mm -hmm. Well, I seems like a sour note to leave things on. I I get it. This is about how great the defense is. Walk on Holden Bass got a shout out from Joe Klanerman that says he's going to be a dude, a defensive tackle before it's all said and done. I'm not shocked to hear that the K-State football team likes a guy that's holding bass because this team loves the fish. So I'm not stunned at all. Is it Holton? Is he from Holton, I want to say? No, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Nemaha. Yeah. Nemaha. I think he's going to play. Not this year. I think he's going to be playing at some point. I'm talking – I'll go through – Bo Palmer's no longer a walkout. So – and – there's other guys that have kind of came through no longer walk-ons. Austin Moore, you're going to get some Kansas walk-ons that in the future will not be Kansas walk-ons anymore because there'll be scholarship. And I'll, and to be honest, that, that might kind of go out the handle anyway now because you don't have a scholarship limit. You have a roster limit. 
You have 105 roster limit, I think, going forward. And if you want to scholarship ball 105, you can. That's what it sounds like to me. Anyway, let's let's think about those guys in that vein, at least. Holden Bass, I think, is going to be a dude at some point. Mikey Bergeron, Mill Valley. Uh, people love, they loved him last year. Yep. And if the safety room was not as uber talented as it is, it was more like the last couple of years, Mikey Bergeron's probably in a 2D, but this 2D is a little too good for him right now, I think. So that's another one that I really like. I'm trying to think. The Wolf, the tight end, the walk-on. Uh, was he Juco? I don't know. Uh, transfer. Mm, yep. Uh, I think he'll play a little banged up right now, it sounds like. But he's a guy that can really block people, really move some bodies. Sam Hacked is getting time right now as a former Kansas walk-on. <laughs> I think his backup, when if push came to shove, would be Hadley Panzer. I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. But if they went to the next guy, it's another walk-on. And we love our walk-on centers at Kansas State. Mm-hmm. And that would be Michael Capria. I think he was on the Missouri side of Kansas City. Can't for can't recall exactly what high school might have been. Liberty, one of the Liberty schools, I want to say. So that yes, comes to correct. mind. Bingo. Yep. Uh, James White, I think, has a chance to do a little bit more than special teams, maybe. Probably just special teams. But there's a chance. Um, transfer from Air Force from is he the Johnson County side of Kansas City, I want to say. James White. You're you're making me do a lot of work here. Uh, <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I can I can I can do my best to uh fact check yeah, that one pretty I believe, easy. Or maybe it might not be Johnson County, but it's on the Kansas side of Kansas City. So we're going through some walk-ons here that I think got a shot. Alex Key from Derby. No, that's your one of your yep. guys too. I think in the future could be a rotation guy. Yeah, uh Kansas side, uh Johnson County for Le James White, St. James Academy. Oh, Lenexa, where I used to mm-hmm. live. Yeah. So, well, it, yeah, I, K-State, I mean, they're, it's that's probably a good positive to leave it on for people because we know that K-State loves their walk-ons, especially local ones, and they're still developing that pipeline. And not only is it that K-State's developing these guys, but I think also the credit has to be given to the players themselves. Like K-State is also just finding players that fit and have that potential And so then it's the marriage of the player and the staff at K-State that is molding them into players that can actually contribute on a Big 12 roster. One other I would point out is a safety, Trey Krause, a lethal West. I think he's a legacy, by the way. Another, another, another walk on to mention on the way out. So that will do it for us today. We'll be back again tomorrow talking more K-State football. But in the meantime, if you need more, make sure you get caught up on everything we've posted on the KSO YouTube as well. Uh, If you have a walk on that you would like to submit for DY to say on the next show, leave it in the comments for us as well. And uh, go to on three, find K-State online and get a lot of other information that we weren't able to squeeze into this 25 minute video for you. Uh, because the coverage of the Cats does not stop over on On3 with K-State Online. So that will do it for us. Thanks for watching and listening to the KSO Show. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. We'll talk to you.